Does anybody else's kids just tug on them all day long? Leave me alone. <laughs> I thought you were gonna take her outside. What did you do? I think it was nothing. Get her, get off the phone. I'm not on the phone. I'll go in there, but you have to take care of the kids. If you actively use social media, chances are high that you've been subjected to a barrage of updates concerning the lives of others. Many of these updates stem from the parents who divulge an abundance of information about their children's every move. Evidently, the significant number of parents lack a discerning mechanism to differentiate between suitable, constructive content to share and the data that could potentially become detrimental to their children's current and future well-being. Hey guys. Born on September 16, 1985, in Northridge, California, Shannon Rose had a challenging upbringing. At the age of eight, her parents divorced, marking the beginning of her struggles. Worsened by the mental and physical abuse inflicted by her stepmother, Shannon encountered further hardships as she navigated her teenage years. Shannon was kicked out of multiple junior high schools and was ultimately sent to a boarding school. She was also admitted into multiple mental hospitals for psychiatric evaluations. The troubled upbringing eventually resulted in Shannon Rose grappling with drug addiction and surviving multiple drug overdoses. Following a devastating car accident before her 16th birthday, Rose was left paralyzed from the waist down. Fortunately, surgery played a crucial role in her recovery, allowing her lower body to regain full functionality. One could argue that Shannon was groomed from an early age, as she has openly spoken about escorting at the age of 14. That um, I started escorting when I was 14, that was like kind of like my real first job. In the years to come, Rose would spend a few months employed as a stripper before transitioning into the adult film industry and adopting the moniker Randy Wright. Rose would go on to appear in 90 adult films between the years of 2004 and 2012. Rose also worked for Playboy TV, featured in multiple men's magazines, and made not-safe-for-work appearances on shows like Howard TV. She would also star in many controversial videos within the fetish genre. In 2018, Shannon made a cameo appearance in Brian Newell's comedy Dead Sexy, a story about three girls and their sex problems. After an eight-year tenure in the adult entertainment industry, Rose made the decision to remove herself from it. She would successfully complete studies to become a medical technician and even enrolled in nursing school. However, Rose would leave before ever finishing the program, though she would at one time or another hold different positions within the healthcare sector. In February 2013, she decided to launch her YouTube channel under her self-titled brand. Hi everyone, I'm Shannon. Hey you guys, it's Shannon Rose. Hey guys, it's Shannon Rose. Hi everyone, it's Shannon Rose. Hey you guys, it's Shannon Rose. She began her YouTube career as a beauty influencer sharing makeup tutorials, DIYs, and fashion videos. Rose would also dabble in the music industry, releasing single white female and Missy. However, it wasn't until Rose switched up the formula and began sharing story time videos, which would primarily consist of stories and anecdotes from her past, that she would begin to grow exponentially in popularity. In 2012, Rose would meet her life partner, Travis Dean, via a popular dating website. The couple would go on to appear in a VH1 reality series in 2013, and a year later, Travis proposed to Shannon. My wife, and what are you married? Yes. Yes. Okay. There you go. Oh my God, it's beautiful. And it's very sweet birthday. The pair later married in August of 2015. Soon after, Rose found herself caught up in a contentious dispute with another YouTuber, Amber Walter, which originated after Shannon's wedding reception. This has accused me of not just murdering her wedding, but she has accused me of stealing thousands of dollars in parts from her wedding. She has accused me of harassing her. She has accused me of stalking her. She's Rose alleged that Amber had taken items from the event, and the disagreement quickly escalated. Both parties claimed to be victims of death threats, stalking, and harassment, ultimately leading to Shannon Rose obtaining a restraining order against Amber. Over the next several months, there would be a vicious back and forth between the YouTubers, culminating in a legal battle between the pair. Right, but I don't want to waste my time well, doing this stuff. I've wasted enough of my time going through all yes, of this women being harassed by someone how do you think that I have nothing to do with and I never even talk about. Has she, has she shown you any proof or evidence that I've harassed her? 
videos I've seen, yeah, that, uh, I, not harassment in the sense of that's the way the two of you have been going at each other. Shannon Rose, who initiated the legal action, would emerge victorious and was awarded in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million dollars. After the controversy surrounding Rose's wedding subsided, Rose and Dean shifted their focus towards building a family. Regrettably, Shannon and Travis would encounter difficulties related to their infertility. They began documenting their IVF journey, which many felt was informative and relatable. That was everything, I think, everything. We will see, but uh, yeah, very anxious. I have butterflies in my stomach just thinking about this, like taking all these shots and having to inject myself, so. Hi, Shannon, this is Dottie. I couldn't wait to call you. I'm so excited you are pregnant. This is <laughs> awesome. After a long and emotional battle with infertility, Rose and Dean finally announced that they were pregnant in early 2018. While Shannon was known for her racy storytime videos, which helped to jumpstart her YouTube career, Rose's content began to shift more towards the documentation of her pregnancy. It's been a really long time since my last one, so I have quite a bit to catch you up on. So if you're curious and want to know what's been going on throughout my pregnancy, keep watching. For the past four years while documenting her second successful pregnancy, Shannon primarily focused her attention on creating content centered around her children, though her viewership would noticeably begin to dwindle. Rose would once again dramatize negative interactions with fellow YouTubers in a thinly veiled attempt to regain some of her former notoriety. Oh gosh, well way back when I... That ship sailed. ...tried to kill him and his whole family and burn his house down with his whole family in it. It's a good thing I've changed. <laughs> However, it wasn't until Rose decided to capitalize on her daughter's health challenges for financial profit and share private videos, not only on her YouTube channel, but behind a subscription-based paywall on Patreon, that Rose's popularity saw an upward trend. Shannon's justification for revealing her daughter's private information was that she said it was a way of dismantling the stigma surrounding mental health in children. The whole issue with a lot of people saying like, oh, you shouldn't put Snow's like mental health stuff online, which I think is like totally stigmatizing mental health because people that are autistic or if someone has some sort of other illness, they're not like, oh, you shouldn't put that online. Like that's her privacy and like you're exploiting your kids and like all these things. And it's like, why? Are aren't you saying that about other things, but you're saying that about mental illness. Like you are just stigmatizing it and making it so much worse for these kids, you know? And you're making them feel bad about them having a mental illness, which is like so messed up. It's important to note that addressing this topic is necessary. However, being a parent or legal guardian does not give one the authority to share or distribute the type of material Shannon Rose has without obtaining informed consent. The type of consent which can only be given by an adult. So her full scale IQ, which was made up of different indexes, was a 73, which is the lower end of the borderline range, which is in the 70s. Okay. So she had a 73. Below 70 gets into the extremely low range. In disclosing such intimate aspects of her daughter's life, Rose could be leading her child towards developing long life traumas and harboring feelings of resentment towards her mother, among many other potentially negative outcomes. For any reason, Snow at any point like doesn't want to be on camera or, or like voices that to us in any way, we would like never, we would just stop filming her, you know, like. Take a deep breath, my love. Hey, get out of your bed. 2010 study showed that in the U.S., more than 90% of two-year-olds and 80% of babies already had an online presence. This parental behavior is increasingly putting children at risk for identity theft, various privacy violations, humiliation, future discrimination, and causing concern about developmental issues related to autonomy and consent. Furthermore, coupled with Rose's accessible we're sharing, Shannon has shown time and time again that the well-being of her children could potentially be compromised. Over the course of her time on YouTube, she has documented her encounters with online and offline stalkers. There are people out there that just don't like us, so much so that they're willing to go through to great lengths to make false accusations and reports to the police and Child Protective Services. Open it up and just about had a heart attack because 
Let me just show you. Again, totally blank, nothing on it. All that was inside was this. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this was actually a picture taken from outside my office window. I'm gonna block his face out just because like, I don't know, I feel like I don't wanna like put this person on blast even though they are freaking stalking me and I don't know why. So this is what the person looks like. This is them coming up to my front door. The same person that's come up, the same person that was taking pictures of me from my master window, like that parked his car across the street. Today's video, I'm going to be doing a stalker update video. This video is going to be all about how my stalker wants to hurt my baby. I have been getting so many like messed up messages from this person uh, and I thought I would share it with you. In her most recent business undertaking, Rose and Dean's current place of residence has become public knowledge. Rose herself has more egregiously participated in the invitation of a potentially hazardous situation by welcoming her viewers to come and visit their home. We're like officially listed on Airbnb. Um, we've actually already had people come stay with us. Some of our subscribers have come and stayed. We've done like campfires where we've like hung out and our kids have played together. The practice of extending open invitations like this carries the potential for truly tragic consequences. It's well documented that family vloggers featuring young children often attract an unsavory demographic, especially when combined with the fan base from the creator's prior adult entertainment career. This pairing creates a dangerous combination that could lead to disastrous outcomes. Hold on, I'm gonna make sure I'm the same stalker. I, mean, get, I don't wanna get my stalkers confused. <laughs> Regrettably, the behavior displayed by Shannon Rose and her partner isn't unique to them or limited to the family vlogging community. Rather, it serves as a representation of the broader industry and the mindset prevalent among these content creators. Many believe that the legal framework surrounding this relatively new field hasn't caught up with the rapid pace of its growth. Unless there is a swift transformation, we're hurtling towards a tragic event that may prompt for more swift action against the exploitation of children in this type of content. Nonetheless, there are steps we can take at present to combat this issue. Spreading awareness through social media and taking action such as boycotting family vloggers can have an impact. The consequences are already becoming evident, as seen with creators like Rose, whose viewership has been steadily declining over the past year. However, this decline might drive creators to adopt increasingly desperate tactics to retain and attract new viewers, as observed in Rose's recent actions, where she nonchalantly incorporates her children's personal lives and experiences. She was just really struggling and like suffering a lot. It's really hard to watch her, her kids suffer. Say hello. <laughs> In the face of this, we must remain resolute and focused on the positive outcomes of our efforts. This desired outcome is nothing less than the end of family vlogging and the exploitation of children in all its manifestations.